then coming to peptic ulcer diseases. Uh, so far in the stomach, we spoke about the inflammation of the stomach, that is gastritis. Then we are moving on to the topic, peptic ulcer disease. We know there are two conditions to mainly focus on, gastric and the duodenal ulcers. Uh, remember, the duodenal ulcer, this slide is very important. The age, duodenal ulcer commonly seen in the patients with 30 to 40 years and gastric ulcer is above 50 and 60 years, that is middle age. Sex, more common in male duodenal ulcers, female gastric ulcers. Occupation, mainly the stress. Here, the stress is the most commonest cause and even the gastric ulcers, including the diet as well. Uh, that is, uh, taking food at irregular intervals could be one of, one of the causes. Pain, in the duodenal ulcer, the patient complains of epigastric discomfort in gastric ulcer, the patient will have epigastric pain and this pain can radiate to back, okay? And the onset here, the patient will have pain two to three hours after eating food and usually at midnight. Whereas the gastric ulcer, the patient will have food immediately after eating. Gastric ulcer will have immediately after eating, whereas the duodenal ulcer, after three to, two to three hours, he'll have pain. And here, when does this pain get aggravated? Duodenal ulcer will aggravate by when he's hungry. Gastric pains will get aggravated when he's eating. And again, uh, duodenal ulcer, he feels better by eating and duodenal ulcer by vomiting and lying down. Duration of this uh, is mainly periodicity. Periodicity here, the attacks will come for several weeks, followed by symptom free period he'll have. Then after two to three months, again, he'll have a relapse. Similarly, the same uh, periodicity is marked here even in gastric ulcer. Vomiting is very rare in duodenal ulcer, whereas the gastric ulcer, the patient will have pain immediately after eating and after vomiting, he feels ameliorated. Okay, the, he feels better after vomiting. Appetite, here the appetite is good, but though patient appetite is good, he is afraid to, uh, sorry, um, yeah, the ear appetite is good, but he eats frequently to avoid pain. That is what he eats to relieve the pain. Whereas gastric ulcer, he is afraid to eat because it causes him pain. Weight, there is no weight loss in duodenal ulcer, but here the patient will have weight loss. Whereas hematemesis, the patient will have uh, in duodenal ulcer, hematemesis is present. In gastric ulcers, there is mainly the hematemesis, whereas in duodenal ulcer, it is mainly the melina. Remember, gastric ulcer, the patient will commonly present with more hematemesis, vomiting of blood, whereas here he'll have blood in stools. Now, the important investigatory points. Uh, diagnostic test here you do is esophagogastroduodenoscopy. That is including the esophagus, stomach and the duodenum is so gastro duodenoscopy you'll do endoscopy you look for the ulcer and uh, you take for biopsy to see whether it has undergone uh, cancer and also to diagnose h pylori to diagnose this h pylori you do a test called urea breath test that is it is used to detect h pylori client drinks a carbon rich urea solution and exhaled carbon dioxide is then measured so you, you will give a you will give a urea solution which has more concentration of carbon and after that you will see urea breath test that is in a breath you will see how much amount of carbon dioxide has been exhaled this is a specific test for h pylori okay and other investigation you do is upper gastrointestinal series barium swallow and the x-ray you look for full gi tract uh, commonest complication of peptic ulcer, remember the bleeding. Bleeding is the most commonest one in the ulcers. The blood vessel damage of as ulcers erodes into the muscle and the stomach or the duodenal wall. Peptic ulcer, you will have more, mostly the bright red bleeding. Once the patient is undergoing into the cancerous state, the CA stomach will have a coffee ground vomitus. Okay. Or even in the peptic ulcers, the patient can vomit a coffee ground vomitus if uh, if the bleeding is occult, like, okay, uh, or else the coffee ground vomitus is classical for CS stomach. And then you have a perforation. 
perforation that is the ulcer comes throughout the entire wall bacteria and the partially digested full comes into the peritoneum then you will end up having peritonitis if not the ulcer there is fibrosis scarring leading to scar formation causes full obstruction of the stomach you will have pyloric obstruction or you also call it as gastric outlet obstruction fine if that is a condition uh, there is complete distension of the stomach and vomiting of food which is very foul smelling okay so remember the person can bleed if not there is complete perforation ending up in peritonitis or the ulcer can undergo fibrosis the fibrosis causing scarring the scarring can lead to obstruction the obstruction can be either pyloric obstruction or you also call it as gastric outlet obstruction it is simple pathology complications and note it's, this is again the most important slide the most commonest site for peptic ulceration in duodenum is first part of duodenum remember i repeat the question the most common site for peptic ulceration in the duodenum if they are asking in the duodenum write first part of duodenum if not the most common site for peptic ulceration in the stomach is antrum fine or else you can also get a question most common site of gastric ulcers is on lesser cur curvature straddling the less insura angularis incisura angularis if they are specifically asking duodenum write it as first part of duodenum if it is specifically in the stomach antrum if they are generally asking which is a commonest site for gastric ulcer write it as lesser curvature including the incisura angularis okay and next one the most common complication of both acute and chronic peptic ulcer diseases as i mentioned earlier is gi hemorrhage if it is gastric ulcer you will have a hemorrhage in the form of hematemesis if there is duodenal ulcer you have bleeding in the form of melina okay and the most common arterial source of hemorrhage in duodenal ulcer is gastro duodenal artery these were the mcqs which were asked in the previous years i have put it down here one being this one common site in duodenum and another one is in general gastric ulcers then the arterial source of blood for duodenal ulcer is gastro duodenal artery okay there may be few questions which i have not put for mcqs but I but i can ask you randomly okay so please focus on this i'll move to the next one other one uh, there are few important points stress ulcer after head trauma within the stomach you call it as cushing ulcers okay that is stress ulcer after head trauma is called cushing ulcer it results from increased intracranial pressure and uh, this stress cushing ulcers can occur in the stomach proximal duodenum or the esophagus okay stress ulcer after head trauma is cushing ulcer stress ulcer after severe burns is curling ulcer okay these are the important one 